Welcome, internet friends, to subscriber story time number six. Today we have five subscriber submitted stories, tales of haunted castles, strange glowing lights, mysterious handprints, an eerie sawmill, and strangers with ill intentions. So without further ado, turn out the lights and enjoy. During the late summer this year, my aunt and uncle, who live in a small country village, were away on holiday. They had offered for me and my dad to stay at their home during this time, as we hadn't really had a holiday yet, and the house was close to a lot of places we wanted to visit. A couple of days into our trip, I had suggested visiting a historical attraction called Chillingham Castle. For those who don't know about the place, it's a beautiful, fairly hidden castle, which is known to be one of the most haunted places in England. I was very interested in visiting because of this, as I myself, with plenty of experiences beforehand, could not deny the existence of the paranormal, but those stories are for a different day. We arrived after a confusing journey of winding country roads and a lack of directions to show us that we were in the right place. Walking up to the entrance, the castle towered out of the fairly appropriate foggy weather. It truly is a beautiful place, however. After paying our entrance fee and collecting our guide map, we made our way to the first room. This was a small, yet cozy room, which was furnished with dark wood furniture, along with old weapons and traps along the walls. There weren't many people there with us, so I made my way over to an intriguing array of photos and letters on what I recall was an old piano. I was drawn to an older photo of a young girl, along with what looked like a strange colored film or glitch just below her in the image. The note beside it read how this appeared after the photo itself was taken, with no explanation as to why or how it had occurred. The photo had been taken in the current room I was in, which both intrigued me and slightly unnerved me. Forgetting about the tale, I drew my attention away from the photo and spotted my dad walking into a small, open doorway opposite where I was standing. I followed after him into what was a very cramped dungeon room with rough brick walls and a bear trap in the corner. It was only me, my dad, and a family of three in the room with us. I will include images to show what the room looked like. As we all looked at the stone etchings of prisoners' names, I heard a loud bang, which only seemed to catch my attention. Since no one else acknowledged it, I chose to shrug it off as furniture being knocked back in the other room. Moments later, the family went to leave, only for the child to exclaim, The door shut! I was in the middle of taking photos on my phone when I heard this. I left the camera open and my eyes widened as I looked at my dad, who was also staring at me in confusion. This door to the dungeon wasn't a modern, light door that can be knocked shut. It was the original, thick, wooden door from when the dungeon was in use, and I distinctly remember it being propped open, right against the wall. There were no windows open or doors to the outside to allow a draft in, and because the door was kept open inwards, we would have seen if anyone had reached in and shut it, as a joke. The parents swung the door back open and left quickly, as if nothing had happened. I, however, repeatedly questioned, well, who shut the door on us then? Whilst my dad kept quiet, laughing anxiously. We quickly followed the steps of the family before us, leaving the small dungeon room after I had tested the door and concluded that it simply could not have been knocked shut. Back in the first room, there was only one or two older people who were busy looking at paintings on the wall. I shot my dad a panicked look yet again, starting to question again who shut the door. My words were cut short, however. I looked down at my phone at this point, which still had the camera open, only to find the screen glitched with multiple colored stripes across it, like the photo of the girl. My face flushed and I showed my dad the screen, at which point I saw his fairly skeptical expression turn to realization. I tapped repeatedly at the capture button to take a photo of what I was seeing through my phone. However, it never worked. My fairly new phone, which I've never had a single problem with and hadn't damaged in any way, would not take a photo and instead continued to show me the glitched screen. 
I ran to compare this to the photo and story I had read earlier, and yet again, my phone would not take a photo of this comparison. Eventually, I managed to take a screenshot of what was showing up on the camera, which I will also include. I tried everything I could to get my phone back to normal, but nothing worked. At least not until we finally left to go to the next area. Without hesitation, my phone screen jumped back to normal and my camera began to work immediately after we left that room, and I haven't had a problem with it since. It's safe to say we were both taken aback by the event, but continued on with a normal and natural day out in the rest of the castle. To add to all of this, I spoke to a volunteer working there about the experience and even showed him the image. He wasn't phased in the slightest. In fact, unknown to me, that room and the dungeon were well known for paranormal activity and angry spirits. Maybe something didn't like us being in the dungeon or that we were taking photos. Since then, I'm a lot more careful about where I choose to use cameras. The event I'm going to talk about happened in July of 1986 in Ohio. I was 13 years old at the time. I was on summer break from school and usually stayed up to watch the late night talk shows in my bedroom. The last show I was watching ended at 1 o'clock a.m. I turned off the TV and pulled down the window shades in the room and got into bed. I had no nightlight and the room was very dark. I fell asleep, but woke up a short time later for some reason. I opened my eyes and noticed a bluish-green glow coming through one of my window shades. The shade covered a window that faced out into an empty field next to our house. I got up and rolled the shade up part way. When I looked out, I saw an egg-shaped object hovering a foot or so above the ground. It was about 30 feet from the house and about 15 feet in diameter. It was emitting that bluish-green glow I had seen through the window shade. I was completely shocked when I saw it and decided I must be dreaming the whole thing. I rolled the shade back down, got back into bed, and closed my eyes. A couple of minutes later, I could see brightness through my eyelids. It was a pulsing brightness, going on and off about once a second. I opened my eyes and saw that a flashing bright pinpoint of light was hovering over my dresser which was about five feet from my bed. Again, I was shocked and figured I must be dreaming. I pinched myself because I had heard you can't feel pain in your dreams. I figured I wouldn't feel anything, or maybe I'd even wake myself up. I felt the pain from the pinch, indicating to me that I was awake, and an intense terror came over me. It wasn't that I couldn't move, like with sleep paralysis. But I felt that getting out of bed would cause whatever it was to make its move on me. I pulled my bed covers over my head and started praying. My next memory was waking up in the morning. I examined my dresser, but there was no indication that anything had been there. Same thing with the field next to our house. I told my mom and dad what had happened. My dad immediately dismissed it as an overactive imagination. My mom believed me, but had no explanation for what had occurred. Nothing like this has ever happened to me since. Over the years, I have gone over and over this event, trying to find a rational explanation for it. I know that if I were to hear someone tell me a story like this, my first thought would be that it was sleep paralysis. In the years after this event happened, I've encountered sleep paralysis a couple of times, it was nothing like what happened that night. For one thing, I wasn't paralyzed. I could move my head, arms, and legs without any problems. I also didn't see the shadowy figures that are often part of the sleep paralysis experience. I don't believe I was lucid dreaming, either. I've had lucid dreams in my later years, and it's a completely different experience, usually a positive one. Plus, with the amount of terror I was feeling at the time, I have to believe I would have woken up from such a nightmare. I've wondered why I have no memories between the time I pulled the blanket over my head that night and when I woke up the next morning. I can't believe I would have gone right back to sleep. I was freaked out, to say the least, and not in any condition to drift off. I've thought of trying hypnotic regression therapy for this to recover any missing memories, 
but I've heard that this type of therapy can easily produce false memories and not an accurate account of what happened. I also wonder if my mind blocked out whatever happened and it's better that I don't know. Anyway, my parents are now both deceased. I've never told anyone else, family or friends about this event and I don't plan to due to the ridicule I would likely receive. I do wonder though, if anyone else has had the same experience. This just recently happened to me, and I still don't have the answer as to why this happened or what happened. My grandparents are both in their late 80s and are dependent on each other. My grandmother is severely overweight and can't walk, and my grandfather has hearing problems, bad enough to the point where even with a hearing aid, he is still legally deaf. She has to be his ears, and he has to be her legs. My grandma had recently gotten out of surgery for heart issues and was restricted to her bed for two weeks. That being said, I was over a lot at their house to help the both of them while she was bedridden. I was staying for a few nights with them since my grandma's needs were too much for my grandpa to keep up with. He can't hear her requests for help, after all. I was in the guest room around 10pm one night, watching YouTube videos, when I heard a massive thud almost like an explosion. It came from my grandpa's room, and I rushed over to see what had happened and he was mumbling frantically. I also heard my grandma say from her room, What was that? I flicked on my grandpa's lights and his TV had fallen off the dresser and landed near the closet. This may not sound weird, but his TV was one of those massive, bulky CRT TVs from the early 2000s. It was sitting on top of a thick wooden dresser and was firmly pushed up against the wall with a good six inches of free space from the edge. There was no way this TV could have just fallen off. There were scuffs in the paint that looked as if someone had grabbed the TV and slid it off. And remember how I said it landed near the closet? The closet is on the opposite side of the room of the TV. They also have carpet floors, so there's no way that the TV could have made such a loud sound to wake my grandpa and bounce all the way to the closet. When I tried to pick it up, I barely could. It easily weighed over 150 pounds, and there was no chance in hell that my grandpa could have even budged that TV, let alone knock it off the dresser. Plus, he had been asleep for a good two hours beforehand. I went into my grandma's room to tell her that grandpa's TV had just fallen off the dresser. She asked me if I had heard anything else, and when I told her no, she said she thought she heard someone out on the patio. Her room has a double door that leads out to the patio, so she was concerned that there was an intruder. I told her I would go check it out, and my grandpa said he'd go with me after he used the bathroom. I went out to the patio and saw that the screen door that leads to the backyard was jarred open. I went outside and nothing was there. I went back in to tell my grandparents that everything was fine, when my grandpa called me into the bathroom. I asked him what was up and he shined a flashlight up to the skylight that's in the center of the bathroom roof. There was what looked like a handprint on it. I told him to wait there and went to the garage and got a ladder to go up to the roof. I took his gun that he keeps in the garage, just in case. I went to where the skylight was on the roof and checked it out, and sure enough, it was a handprint. The odd thing was, there was no discernible fingerprints on it. When I rubbed it with my finger, it was cold and wiped away with ease. It was condensation. There was no mistaking it though, it was a handprint. I got off the roof, put away the ladder, and went inside. I told my grandparents it was just some water from the rain we got earlier, and that everything was fine. I didn't want to scare them, as I truly believe their hearts wouldn't take it well. I stayed up all night in case anything else happened. Nothing did, and nothing has happened like that since. I am a believer in the paranormal, but I try not to jump to that conclusion without debunking first. Out of all of my experiences, I feel I should share the ones that have gone on at the sawmill where I work in North Idaho. 
This may be a bit long, but I'll try to explain some terminology as best I can. Several months after I started working at the mill, I was promoted to saw filer, which basically is a maintenance guy in charge of changing and sharpening saw blades. Filers have a room in the basement of the mill with various grinding machines and saw blades lined from wall to wall. A few days into training for the graveyard shift, which ran from 11pm to 7.30am, I was told that the room was rumored to be haunted. I thought the guys were just messing with the newbie, so I just shrugged it off and focused on learning. When I was finally on my own, every now and then, I would get the feeling that I was being watched. My first experience was when I was passing through the room and noticed a fence board propped up against the wall was vibrating. This was normal, the waste system that surrounded the room often shook, but I stopped when I noticed the motion get more and more erratic. I stepped a bit closer and the board suddenly thrashed around so violently that it wasn't even touching the wall anymore, and out of nowhere, it flew across the room and crashed into the wall. Needless to say, I ran back out of the way I came in and sat in the break room until my nerves settled. When I went back in to put the board back, I was shocked to see that it was gone. Sometime after that, I began to witness more and more unexplainable events. Heavy doors slamming when I'd walk near them, figures in the corners of my eyes that vanished when I tried to look at them. Trying to get some insight, I finally told my experiences to my coworkers and got back stories similar to mine. Machines starting on their own, shadow figures, even a locker door opening up slowly and objects falling out. Some extremely heavy and placed in positions that made it impossible for that to happen. One story that gave me chills was when a coworker was walking outside. The lights above gave a stadium-like effect, multiple shadows of a single object, including my coworker. As he walked, he got a feeling of foreboding and stopped and watched as one of his shadows kept walking without him. These occurrences had oddly large gaps between them, most times. Just when you forget about it, something strange happens. I finally decided to ask about the mill's history when I felt I heard footsteps walking around behind me as I was using a lathe. The steps paced back and forth and finally stopped right behind me. I turned around thinking it was a co-worker, but there was no one there. The mill is roughly 40 years old, and most of the older workers had retired, but we did finally hear a story. Way back in the day, a millwright, or rather a mechanic or saw filer, depending on the version we heard, went missing one night as the swing shift ended. All the trucks that came by and picked up sawdust were radioed and told to empty out their loads. Sure enough, the missing maintenance guy, or rather what was left of him, got caught in the hog, which is a machine that mulches up scrap wood. We never got a name, and he doesn't seem to want to harm anyone, but he definitely doesn't like being forgotten. The story I have for you was relayed to me by my boyfriend at the time. About ten years ago, my boyfriend, Andrew, moved across the country to Banff, Alberta, to live for a while in a cabin out in the woods. He had no money, no car, and a minimum wage job. One night, at about four in the morning, I was asleep when my phone started ringing. It was him calling collect from a payphone, completely panicked. He had gone to a bar that night with his housemate. The bar was about an hour's drive away in the middle of nowhere, and it was only accessible by one road. He had gotten into an argument with his housemate at the bar, and she ended up leaving without him. With what very little resources he had, his only option to get home was to hitchhike. He had been walking down the road for some time, waiting for a kind soul to pass by. A few cars had passed, but no one would stop for him. Finally, about a half hour into his walk, a car with two men stopped. Andrew eagerly hopped into the back seat and let the guys know where he was headed. They obliged and continued on their drive. On the dimly lit road, it was hard to see any surroundings. Every once in a while, a car would pass and their headlights would shine into the vehicle Andrew was riding in. During one of the very short-lived times the car was illuminated, 
Andrew decided to look at his saviors. He noticed that there was blood on their faces. Shocked, he looked closer at the two of them. They were both covered in blood and cuts, and they both had teeth missing. Trying to remain cool, Andrew casually asked the guys what they had been up to that night. One guy turned back to Andrew and, completely deadpan, said, Doing meth and murdering people. Not being able to reply properly to this, Andrew sat there, stunned. Both guys started laughing like lunatics, and the other guy said, He's lying. We were on a movie set. Andrew kept staring at them and decided that the two men were definitely high and definitely wounded. Andrew demanded that they stop the car at an upcoming gas station. The guys tried to reassure him, but he insisted. Luckily for him, they pulled over and let him out. He ran into the gas station and used the phone to call me, 3,000 kilometers away. Somehow, he managed to get home that night unscathed, physically, but he ended up having nightmares for months because of it. Special thanks to Megan, Anonymous, CJ, Kate, and Luke for sharing their stories with us today. If you have a personal terrifying encounter you've had, it can be paranormal or not, please feel free to send it to subscriberstorytime at gmail.com and your experience might end up in the next subscriber story time. If you wish to stay anonymous, please mention that in your email. Thank you all for listening to the end today, and if you liked the video, it would really help me out to leave a like and a comment down below. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos from me. Stay safe, friends, and have a good night.